Hello everyone, Bizork here. Today I'm going to show you how I fully automated rune production in Botania with a little bit of help from Open Computers and a couple other mods. Open Computers is one of my favorite Minecraft mods because it allows you to get programmable computers that you can write your own software for. And I guess the downside is that if you're using mods, there's like a million other mods that will just do exactly what programmable computers can do, but only you don't have to program anything. But there's uh, something kind of fun about building your own computers from scratch and then just programming, the, programming them to do specific tasks. And uh, especially for something complex like ruin production, I found that it was pretty handy to have the ability to just write the programs. Although at this stage in the game, once you've gotten this far, you know, enough to, to build these expensive high-end computers and all the pipes and everything like that, maybe this was a little overkill. But it was a fun little project and I'll just show you how it works really quick. So uh, right here is kind of the central hub. Well, first of all, I should say that, you know, here's here are the computers and I have a big monitor. This will actually work even with just one monitor if I just broke this. Um, and, uh, and so you can do that, but I, I wanted to have the big, the big touch screen display. And then, um, and then we have an item transposer here connected to three chests. Uh, the item transposer um, has the ability to access chests and then um, and, and shift items between chests. So there's a chest on the front, a chest on the top, and a chest on the back. The front chest is the input chest, also known as the output chest. The, one, the chest on the top is the buffer chest, and the chest on the back is the feed chest. And the way it works is that when I click on an item on this screen, items will be loaded from the input chest into the buffer chest. Um, all of the items required to build that specific rune and then if all of those items were found, they will be all fed one at a time into the feed chest. Otherwise, they'll be loaded back into the input-output chest, and an error message will be shown on the screen. I'll just show you what that looks like. I don't have any feathers, so if I click error, it will tell me that I'm missing feathers, that I can go find that item. So once items are loaded into the feed chest, they are fed through a hopper and then a series of hopper ducts. Hopper ducts are kind of like hoppers, only they're able to feed items upwards. And uh, essentially they have one inventory slot and all they do is just push items forward. They don't collect items from their environment. And this is really something that I think Minecraft should have in vanilla Minecraft. You shouldn't need a mod for this. This is very true to the lore of Minecraft. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate that the developers of Minecraft have decided not to add any type of piping system. But something like this would be so simple that I think it would be right up Minecraft's alley. So anyway, you can get this as a mod. But I, personally, I think this should be a, a part of vanilla. Um, and then, yeah, so unfortunately, the hopper ducks don't feed into the bot botany open crate, so I have another hopper here, and it just drops the ingredients for the rune here, and then, you know, standard system set up here where you have the redstone comparator. Once the rune is ready to be made, this will output a uh, output level of one, and then this is, again, another open computer's um, redstone interface now that uh, will feed the data back into the computer to let it know that the rune is ready to start charging and then the computer will just wait for the rune to get produced. And it will know when the rune is finished when the redstone comparator outputs a signal of two. And then it will output a living rock into the uh, open crate. And, uh, and then once that hits the crate, uh, the computer will activate this dispenser with a wand of the forest to finish off the rune. The completed product or products are fed into the hopper cock here, which uh, feed into the hopper at the back, and then that just pumps everything back into the input-output chest. So let's build a rune. Let's give it a try. I'm going to use, um, let's build a rune of lust. Okay, I'm missing a mana diamond. That's fine. Let's build a, um, how about an autumn? Great. So just like that, and that will just charge up fairly rapidly. I have like a, a giant fly, uh, slime farm here. There's an item in random things that allows you to turn any chunk into a slime chunk. And slimes will spawn at any height. So I just built this giant spawn trap <laughs> that, that generates an enormous amount of mana. Okay, that's done. Drops the living rock, and bam. And then those will all just feed into the output chest. Pretty cool stuff. One of the cool things about this is that it could easily be modified if you wanted to 
to allow it to just automatically make the runes as you need them. So like for example, oh I take out a bunch of summer runes, it will automatically produce the summer runes. But then you need to get the inputs of the summer runes, which I think is sand and melons. So you have to have an infrastructure that will allow you to automatically get these items. And then, you know, in theory you could just automatically produce runes like crazy. But unfortunately, once you're at the stage in this game where you can just automatically produce runes like that, you don't really need the runes anymore. Like right now, I, after finishing this machine, like I'm already basically, you know, as uh, leaded up as I can possibly get in, in Botania. Like, you know, I have all the best items. They're all like almost fully upgraded with uh, enchantments and you know, I can fly around using those uh, crazy Botania wings. And then another thing is that, uh, yeah, the, you know, the program took a while to make, but it was kind of fun. I, you know, I, I don't do this because, like, I really need it. I do it just because it's, like, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing to do. It's kind of like a hobby. It's, you know, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. If, if you guys are interested in the code for this, I can make it open source. But let's just see if I can access that code and maybe I can show you. How do I end this program? Um, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um yeah, I haven't played this in a while. I've been doing other things, and I've been meaning to make this video. So I actually, um, I kind of lost my memory of what I was doing with this. But let's just see uh, if I can access the code for this. Let's start off with the big chars library, since that is the library that actually draws the letters on the screen. And I'll just show you how it works. It looks like the um, open computer is not really displaying this program correctly. So let me just open this up in uh, like Visual Studio Code, so that I can actually show you without having to worry about like whatever these characters are here. Okay, so here it is, and uh, I'll, I'll go over some of the code here, and we'll see if I can remember what the hell I was doing when I made this. Um, but first of all, this big chars library. Um, yeah, so, okay, this was the tab character, and I guess Open Computers doesn't support that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a tab guy, not a space guy, so uh, I deal with it. So this is just like a pattern for each of the letters. And yeah, so I had to type this out. I did uppercase and lowercase, so this is just like a ton of stuff here. Moving on to the runic.lua, uh, if I could go back again, maybe I wouldn't have used the big chars for the menus. Um, like I can't even fit a settings option in because this takes up all the space. So I don't know, maybe I would go back and, and fix that, make, maybe make it like a drop down or something, or maybe just fully automated or I don't know. All these do is move items from one chest to another using the transposer. And then just like I defined the letters over in the big chars library, here I'm defining what each uh, rune looks like. It actually went pixel by pixel and that's how these are being drawn. And then again the drawing for the rune itself is also just uh, you know a big giant character that gets drawn. In fact there's two characters that get drawn over top of each other and these are uh, drawn in different colors. So one of them is drawn as like you know a, a border background and one of them is drawn as a, a foreground and these are drawn right on top of each other um, using the big chars library and it creates kind of a have a you know pretty good graphical effect and then the runic chars are just drawn right on top of uh, this stuff now there's a lot more that I could say here about this as a state machine or as a program but I guess I don't want to turn this into a big programming video so I might cut it off right there uh, most of the logic is pretty standard like anyone can do this but really the the interesting thing I think that most people might be interested in is the artwork behind the characters and the runes that got drawn since that really makes for a very beautiful display and really adds a lot of depth to this program. Like seriously, when I first recorded this, I realized that I have over a half an hour of me talking about the programming and uh, yeah, I guess this is just something that I get really excited over, so I'll uh, cut it off right now. There is just one more thing that you'll need to know if you're going to be using this program. Now because it was my intent from the beginning to make this open source, I tried to make everything configurable. So there are a few lines at, at the top of the code here that you may need to configure if you want to download this code and, and get going off the bat. For example, you need to tell it where the chests are. So like, you know, there's the temporary chest, there's the chest one input output chest, there's the chest two, which is your, out, your 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 feed chest that feeds into the open hopper, excuse me, open crate, uh, and then yeah, the temporary chest that is like your buffer chest, and then um, uh, same with the runic comparator. You have to tell it which side is the side that outputs to the dispenser, and which side is the one that gets the input from the comparator, and then yeah, the the, the number of seconds to wait as well when you are piping items from the feed chest into the runic altar. 
So you can just configure all these numbers based on your setup. Now again, one of the things that I would have liked to have is the ability for you to configure this using software instead of just having it hard-coded here in the code. Uh, but I don't know, I think I'm done with this project right now. I put a lot of time into it and uh, it was fun while I was working on it, but well, it is gonna be on GitHub, so I am open to pull requests. You know what, why don't we go ahead and build one of these things? And that just faces here. Throw that in there. Now you don't actually have to use hopper ducts, you could just use any transport system to transport the items from the starting chest into the open crate. If I recall correctly, it went like this. Nice. We got the one with the Lua BIOS. And uh, yeah, I guess. You can just turn this on. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You have to install Lua. All right. Well, you know, this is. Uh, I didn't want this to be a guide for open computers, but I could do this real quick. <laughs> okay. Okay. Exciting. That's more like it. Okay, now um, I actually built an installer for this that you can get um, just off the internet. I guess Open Computers comes with the ability to access uh, Pastebin. So I, I just put all this code on Pastebin. And I, I actually, I think I might need an internet card to access this. Oh no. Oh no. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to put a crappy graphics card in. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh, paste in. Oh good, okay. And then the command is, can I just paste this in? No, I have to type it. Paste bin get 1fbuvl39. Nine. I'm just looking at my other monitor to get the code here. And then install runic.lua. And I guess that's it. Lua install runic.lua. Okay, cool. And now, um, yeah, it opens up the editor. And what you got to do here is just make sure that the uh, the sides are configured properly. So uh, let's see, it is facing west. So we want to make sure that chest one is on the west hand side of the of the item transposer, which it is. So this all looks good. And I guess I can close this. How do you exit this? Seriously, this is worse than Vim. Okay, I think it's Control W. So. Uh, okay, yeah, so it just it crashed because the color palette is not supported. That's fine. That was expected. Bam, bam, bam. But it, it does try to run the program right away. That's just part of the installer. So if you had the color palette, 
in theory that would be supported, maybe with a tier 3 computer. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just runic, it's lua, runic.lua. Alright, I don't really know what was causing that problem, but I just rebooted, and uh, it looks like it's fixed. So, anyway, this, um, this should work now, so lua, uh, runic.lua, and there we go. Awesome. Now, uh, let, let's just test out the missing ingredient thing. And uh, yeah, let's try making a rune. So in order to make, I'll just throw all these in here actually. So I'm going to make a rune of wrath. Wrath. Oh, and actually I, I see my mistake already. I, I made a, I actually made an error. This is not facing west, it's facing east. So I have it backwards. That's easy to fix. I'm glad we're running into these problems so that people at home trying this will know how to fix them. So let's just edit runic.lua and yeah, I, I, I checked this but I, I must have made a mistake um, with... I was in a rush, so west. Oh, and I completely forgot about this here. You have to set this to south because uh, this is this whole setup is facing the opposite direction. We've got to configure these. I just, yeah, I'm in a rush and I'm uh, ending up wasting more time debugging stuff because I'm not taking my time with it. Oh, I'm really stupid. This comparator is actually facing the wrong way. <laughs> that would have been an easy thing to fix if I had known what the problem was. All right, yeah, this will, this will do it. I'm fairly confident that this will work. Oh, nice. It's actually okay. So that's, a, that's a, a line of code I added for this exact case where it starts up where a recipe is in progress. So it is identifying that, yes, a recipe is in progress. And then, yeah, OK, good, 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 good. Everything appears to be in order. Let's try this one last time here. And 90% sure it's going to work this time. OK. Uh, and yeah, all I need now is a mana spreader. Is there like a creative? Oh shit. All right. Looks like it's about done. Right, now I need, um, oh shit. Uh, and it looks like I just forgot to put some living rock in. We'll just redo that um, with the living rock in there, just to test to make sure everything works. I don't want to leave you guys with buggy code. Sweet. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more Bizork.